Hello Raven's Tale Weavers. We are going to be weaving on one of my favorite projects and that's the Raven's Tale Box of Daylight. This is one of the first projects I did with Cheryl Samuels about 25 years ago. Isn't it so sweet? Here we have the heading cords. We have two of them and they cascade from the left to the right and they become your side cords. We have the Lark's Knot to the left and then as we weave our two-strand twining, we have our um, knot fringe to the right. We have our snow rows at the top. The first two are the snow rows that are known as the heading rows, and they are over the same two warp pairs. And we have alternating snow rows following after that of the two-strand twining. We have the Savage pattern that is in the two color of black and yellow, and it is alternating over four warps. It starts right at the side fringe, the side cord, and it ends at the side cords, at the top and the bottom. And in between the top and bottom, we have this beautiful spiral weft that cascades down and frames our concentric design field. And so this is known as the box within the box within the box or the box of daylight. And here, here's what's known as the box of daylight or treasure. These concentric design fields are done with the three strand twining. And you can see that there's two snow rows between the three. And from the three strand twining of the horizontal and vertical, they come together and close the concentric box and they come together and they're woven interlocked together and braids are done. And so we have six, six of those that just sway and dance with. At the ending of the snow rows after the savage pattern, we have the fringe twining and that helps alternate those beautiful fringe at the bottom. So I'm looking forward to doing this. We have the 30 count of warp and we have the other one set up and ready to go. And we'll be doing this in, in areas and I'll get into more detail as we weave. I look forward to seeing your beautiful box of daylight. At this 30 warp count, it can be used as a child's dancing bag and or an adult pendant. Happy weaving. getting ready to weave the other side. But before we do, we can talk about the warp and how much warp you'll need for both sides will be 24 yards. This happens to be a Z twist by spinning. So it's a little bit bigger than your 10 EPI. Mine is sitting at an eight EPI. Um, it's still within the 30 count for this um, design field. We have um, the warp that has been cut 15 times at 20 inches, so it's going to be a 10 inch long design bag. And the heading cords are cut at 25 inches. And we have some weft, and I got some pre cut. The wefts are measuring at um, 13 inches, so there's, there's a weft on that side. And here is our weavers, very, very long, so here it is double. And these are measuring at, measuring at 25 inches. So the first thing that we're going to be doing is we're going to be doing our two heading rows. And those are on two warp pairs. They're going two, 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 all the way over twice, right up against each other. And then after that, we'll do the alternating snow rows. And so the alternating snow rows is meaning you start on one and then you go two, 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 two. Then your next row will be even where you start at two and you continue weaving on two and you end at two. And then the opposite was starting on one warp and then going back to the twos. And then you, you end on one warp and you, you end on the two. So all, all your rows will always start on two meaning the side cords and then the third and fourth one is where the alternating pairs will be where you'll be going one or two 
So let's get ready and start that. So before we begin, I just wanted to show that I put them in groups and made sure that they're all even. Putting in our fringe on our side cords. Side cords and side warps will be words that I'll be using to describe these ones on the side. And these ones will always be woven together. It'll be the, the ones next to them that will alternate the snow twining of even and odd rows. Making sure that the weft is even. I'm bringing it up as close as I can to the loom bar. And I'll follow the loom bar and grab, I'm doing the S twist. I'm going to grab the, the back of this one, just making sure that they're together. And I'll grab the back one first and the one that's in the front will be second. I'm going to grab these ones, make sure they're together side by side. This is a really important row. This sets the tone of your weaving and your warps laying side by side, making sure they don't overlap each other. One in the back comes forward, and the one in the front will be the second of the pair. Notice my hand is full, so I'm going to release those, and I'll come in the middle of them. Okay, I'm not bunching them up too much with my hand. I'll just hold them and kind of Look at where everything's at before I do the finalized tie of that knot. And then now's the time that you can push, push them where you would like them to lay. I like it to go under the loom bar, the heading cords and the side cords, and then making sure they all have their own space, their own room. And I'll come close and I'll hold right at the end and I'll twirl, giving it a head start. This is where you can make sure your warps have enough room and aren't crowded, not too much space, and evened out. And what I'm trying to do is just make sure that they're parallel to the loom bar. and taking care of our fringe. Ready for this 
second snow row. Putting another fringe in. And, oh, actually, that will go up on the next one. These are going to, these two rows are going to share that fringe because they're really close up. Making sure they're even and just going to repeat what we did above going over twos. Which is always fun. Right hand on. 